Hello and welcome to a video on simultaneous equations brought to you by the Answer Series. We're going to look at two methods for solving simultaneous equations. The first one is by equating and it's used often in functions when both of the equations are in the form y equals. The second method is by substitution where we make either x or y the subject of the formula in one of the equations and then we substitute into the other equation. Example number one, I want you to pause the video, I want you to try this one and then we'll do it together. In this example you will notice that both equations are y equals. So because the y's are the same value, I can make x equal to 4 over x plus 1 plus 2. My common denominator is x plus 1, so I multiply everything by x plus 1, multiply the brackets, set up a quadratic, which you factorize, and solve for x. You then take those values and you substitute back into either of these two equations. It's much easier to use the first one because y is just equal to x, which means whatever my x value was, my y value must be the same in this example. Example number two, I want you to pause the video, I want you to try this one, and then we'll look at it together. I take the linear equation, so the simpler of the two equations, and I'm going to make either x or y the subject of the formula. I want to try and avoid fractions. If I were to make x the subject of the formula, I would have to divide by two, and I don't want fractions, so I make y the subject of the formula, and y is equal to 2x minus 7. Now that y is the same as these y's. So in place of these two y's, I'm going to put 2x minus 7. And so I get that. Multiply the brackets out, set up your quadratic, I notice I can divide through by 7, which will make my quadratic much simpler. I then factorize and I get my two values for x. I take those two values and I substitute them back into that equation and I get the corresponding values of y. So my solutions are x equals 3, y equals minus 1, or x equals 2, y equals minus 3. Example number 3. I want you to pause the video. I want you to try this and then we'll look at it together. I take the simpler of the two equations, the linear equation, and I either make x or y the subject of the formula. You'll notice there are two y's here but there's only one x. So I'm going to make x the subject of the formula because then I only have to substitute it once and I don't need to square anything. So if I make x the subject of the formula, I get minus y minus 5. Now this x is the same as that x. So in place of x, I'm going to put minus y minus 5. And I get that. Multiply the bracket. Set up your trinomial, which you factorize, and solve for y. Now, be very careful. A very common mistake is people start putting x's in here. This is a quadratic in y, which means when I factorize it, it must be y, and I'm solving for y. You'll notice I only get one solution, and we'll look at that just now. I then take my value of y, substitute it back in, and I get my value of x. So my solution is x equals minus 6, y equals 1.
Now, what does it tell you if you've only got one solution? Well, if I draw a graph of that, it looks like this. And if you've done functions and inverses already, you'll recognize that as a parabola on its side. This straight line graph looks like that. What do you notice about where the graphs cut each other? They only touch once. In other words, the straight line is a tangent to the parabola, which means you are only getting one solution. Example number four. You're given that x minus 3 times y plus 4 is equal to 0. And they ask you to solve for x if y is equal to 2, firstly, and secondly, if y equals minus 4. I want you to pause the video. I want you to try these two, and then we'll do them together. If y is equal to 2, in place of y, I put 2. 2 plus 4 is 6. Now, how do I get two things to multiply to give me 0? The only way I can get that is if one of them is 0. 6 is not equal to 0, which means this bracket must be equal to 0, which means x must be equal to 3. What about in the second one if y is minus 4? So in place of y goes minus 4. Minus 4 plus 4 is naught. What times naught is naught? Anything. Because if I multiply anything by zero, I get zero. So what can x be? x can be any real number. Example number five. I want you to solve for x and y. Now the difference with this one is in the past when I gave you simultaneous equations, I gave you two equations. This time you only have one equation. So I want you to pause the video. I want you to try this. Do not spend more than a line or two on this. If you start doing all sorts of things, it's going wrong. So don't try and do a lot of working out. This kind of question would be worth two marks. So pause the video, try it, and then we'll look at it together. This is really a very clever question. And it checks, are you looking at what is happening and do you understand what you're doing? This first bracket is squared. What do you know about a bracket squared? It's always greater than or equal to naught. The second bracket is also squared. What do you know about it? Also greater than or or equal to naught. Now how can I add two things to get an answer of zero? Well, either it could be one is positive, one is negative, the same value, so that then they cancel out and give you zero, but I can't have that in this situation because neither of these two brackets can be negative. So the only way I can get an answer of naught is if I have naught plus naught, which means that both of these have got to be zero. So x minus 4 squared has got to be zero, which means x has got to be equal to 4. y plus 7 squared has got to be zero, which means that y is equal to minus 7. And very, very important, they both have to happen at the same time. Now all of my other solutions have been or this one, it has to be and. The only way this will work is if both x minus 4 squared and y plus 7 squared are equal to 0, which means x must equal 4 and y must equal minus 7. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by the Answer Series. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.